Hey guys, this video is a reaction slash response to a part of a recent video from a channel called Hello Future Me. I will give you a quick TLDR of what happened. Hello Future Me is a channel that I was unfamiliar with prior to someone in my Discord linking me to his video. He is a channel with over a million subs. In the latter half of his video titled Rings of Power is a Disappointment and Here's Why, he calls out multiple channels that he deems to be quote, woke bros and claims that all of them are political activists posing as media critics. The channels he calls out are The Critical Drinker, Night's Watch slash Shadowversity, Nerdrotic, The Quartering, Despot of Antrim, Little Platoon, Just Some Guy, George the Giant Slayer, Heel vs. Babyface, Disparu the Woke Critic, and me. Hello Future Me evidently did not do his research regarding my channel in particular, and because he did not do his research, he has undermined the point he was trying to make in so much as that point held any water to begin with. This means that what has happened, in a nutshell, is that a channel with 1.1 million subs has blatantly misrepresented what my channel is, who I am, and what I think. In spite of this, I am not angry, because the reaction to this appears to be largely on my side. Looking through his comments, I did not find a single one saying, oh yeah, random film talk, fuck that guy, whereas I did find multiple comments calling out Hello Future Me for including me in his video. So anyway, here is my response slash reaction to this segment of Hello Future Me's video. Last thing to mention, the relevant section of his video is very long, and in a lot of instances I simply don't care about what he says, nor do I have anything to add. So in those instances I have cut out what he says, so if you want to see his full video, then it is currently live on his channel. It is hard not to talk about the Rings of Power without discussing the political storm raging around it, one which has defined the show perhaps more than anything actually in it, and places it firmly in the centre of something far more important. A lot of the anger directed at Rings of Power here is not rooted in the same love for Tolkien you and I share. Okay, so straight up he's assuming intent. He's assuming that the various people that he's going to list, which uh, he will get to momentarily, um, he's assuming that they do not care about Tolkien in the same way that he does, um, which I guess means that Hello Future Me is capable of mind reading, because a large part of the problem that Hello Future Me seems to have with the various people that he will list soon uh, is that he believes that they are political activists who are pretending to be, I guess, honest movie reviewers, or in this case, TV show reviewers, that they care more about uh, spreading a particular political agenda than they do about honestly critiquing a particular TV show or movie. And basically what Hello Future Me is doing here is he's poisoning the well immediately by essentially telling his viewers up front that all of these various channels don't care about Tolkien, or they don't care about the Peter Jackson films, um, or that they went into Rings of Power, uh, I guess, knowing that it's going to be bad in a deceptive trend in media criticism we've seen on the rise over the last decade, especially on YouTube. He's also used the word deceptive, which again, immediately, we're poisoning the well. We're going into this in uh, what I think can be reasonably described as bad faith. He has decided what all of these channels think. He considers them to be a hive mind that all have the same opinion. And the reason why I find this particularly funny is because this may be true, and I think it probably is true for definitely some of the channels that he has listed. It's definitely not true for all of them, and it is definitely not true of me. And if he had watched any part of any of my videos, apart from the clip that he shows later, then he would know this. ...because these channels are a Trojan horse. They project this false image of authenticity of critics just concerned with, quote, bad writing, when their real concern is pushing how feminism and wokeness is supposedly ruining movies and television and even society these days. Supposedly, because it's not even necessarily in the media they talk about. They just see it everywhere. There, I think Hello Future Me actually is making a reasonably fair point. Um, however, I do think that he is definitely also guilty of this, which I'll explain in a minute. So he views the these channels that he has termed the woke bros, which for some reason includes me. Um, he has decided that these channels see uh, what they want to see. They, they see things like feminism and uh, he goes on to say, make specific reference to LGBT um, activism or or advocating that that ideology. These people will be unable to enjoy something purely on the basis that it contains pro-feminist, pro-LGBT themes. I guess, um, and like one example of um, where I think to use the example of Drinker, where Drinker was caught out on this, 
was in his coverage of, I believe it was the trailer for the Dungeons and Dragons movie. Um, and I believe he had a very uh, negative response to the trailer. And I can understand him having a negative response to the trailer because it's not a good trailer. It almost misrepresents what the film is. But in that in that instance, because he he essentially changed his mind and he was like, well, OK, now I've seen the film and the film's actually pretty good. Um, but that wasn't him making this up. That wasn't him deciding that, oh, this film's going to be full of the feminism and the blah, blah, blah. And it's going to have the strong women and it's going to have the weak man who does what she says. That is the impression that the trailer gives off. He did not pull this out of his ass. Um, so I have no idea why the Dungeons and Dragons uh, movie trailer presented itself as being like that when the film is not like that. Maybe it was some kind of like false flag type deal where they deliberately did that, knowing that people like Drinker would give the film uh, publicity. But I, that's that's some 4D chess move. I don't think that they, I don't think they would knowingly do that. So Hello Future Me is also definitely guilty of this because. Um, he, he he is saying that the woke bros will see wokery wherever they want, and then they'll complain about it, whether or not those complaints are, you know, actually founded in reality. But what Hello Future Me has also done is by lumping me in with some of these other channels, um, he has seen what he wants to see. Um, he has he, he's evidently gone on Google or on YouTube and he searched, you know, Rings of Power reviews and uh, clicked on a load of them one of them being mine, he's observed that I've made an extremely long, uh, it's th it's nearly 14 hour long series covering Rings of Power. Um, I, I genuinely do not believe that he has actually watched more than about 20 minutes at most of, of it, because otherwise he probably wouldn't have mentioned me. Um, but he has assumed that uh, my content is largely or partially complaining about um, those kinds of societal issues, such as feminism, wokery, girl bossing, and all that sort of thing, which there are moments in my videos, like totaling possibly five minutes out of, um, out of, again, like essentially 14 hours of content, where I will make mention of that kind of thing. But every time I make mention of it, which he would know if he had watched my videos, it is exclusively relating to the context in which it appears. So I have a, I believe it's at the beginning of episode five of Rings of Power, where they essentially girl boss Bronwyn. Um, and she becomes the strong independent leader who everyone listens to because she's the main character. And um, you can complain about that from a societal perspective if you want, if you, if you think that that is problematic for society to see that sort of thing. I don't believe that. But if you did believe that, you could absolutely make that argument. My point was that it was executed unbelievably poorly and that it was not set up it was not set up enough as to be believable at all. Um, and I compare this to how Peter Jackson, and I guess Tolkien previously, handled Eowyn. Um, because Eowyn and Bronwyn appear to be, superficially at least, trying to do similar things. Um, but Eowyn is done exceptionally well, whereas Bronwyn is a complete joke. And there's another part in uh, my final autopsy where I very briefly touch on the diversity of ethnicity and skin color in relation to um, the various factions in Middle Earth. And my problem with it isn't as, I don't know if Hello Future Me would actually uh, apply this caricature to the various people that he's going to list soon. It isn't, oh, I don't like to see black people in, in movies or anytime there's a, there's a strong black character, it's because it's been artificially inserted because of the message or whatever. The problem that I had with that is that it fundamentally makes the setting less believable. And as he would know if he had watched my videos, um, I actually suggested, why not make all of the Harfoots black? Like, you could absolutely do that. That would be more believable than what we end up getting. And my theory as to why the producers of Rings of Power did not do that is because they knew that going into season two, they're going to be ditching all of the Harfoots because of, because of how season one ends with Nori and not Gandalf going off and doing their own adventure. So that would mean that they don't have any black people that they can include in season two. So they decided, well, we can't do that. Like, that's not an option. So we're going to just make every single faction, regardless of their, um, how, regardless of their species, because you've obviously got elves and dwarves as well as humans, um, regardless of their uh, wealth, regardless of how long they have existed, regardless of their geographical location, they are all going to have the same levels of multiculturalism, which, again, if you want to make an argument against that from a societal perspective, then by all means, go for it. I'm not interested in making that argument, however, and the argument that I make is that that, just on the face of it, makes Middle Earth less believable than it was in, for example, the Peter Jackson movies. Here they talk about 
They just see it everywhere. Phantom Feminism, whose channels together have millions of subscribers and pull in millions of views every week as some of the most dominant review channels on YouTube. People like... So uh, this is where he names names. So we got Critical Drinker with one, uh, essentially 2 million subs. Critical Drinker, she had adversity. Uh, Nerd Roddick recently hit a million subs. The quartering, I, I don't really know much about the quartering, but my, my understanding is that he doesn't really talk about movies. Despot of Antrim, I'm unfamiliar with. Just some guy I've heard of, but I've never seen his videos. Uh, Little Platoon, I like a lot, and I have absolutely no idea why he's being mentioned here. So uh, there we've got George the Giant Slayer and the Woke Critic, I'm not familiar with. Disparu, I have no idea why he's there either, but okay. And then you got me. So I'm there on 40,000 subs, recently recently broke 40,000 subs. And what Hello Future Me won't know is that at the point in time when I released the video that he plays a clip from of mine, I had broken... I, th I think I, I think I had recently broken 2,000 subs. So he's going after Critical Drinker with 2 million subs. Um, and he's also put me in there, not knowing that when I put the video out, I had like 2,000. These channels target especially young and vulnerable men with a political narrative. Not only that things like Rings of Power are pushing a feminist and LGBT agenda, but this is why it's bad. So that is a conflation that I think may be accurate for some of these channels. We'll see exactly what, what examples he brings up later, but it's definitely not accurate with all of them. And the opinion that I would give with regard to, let's just say Critical Drinker, because he's the first example that he goes into, Drinker obviously has his opinions on society and um, that, I guess, this kind of emasculation of men and girl bossing of women is bad in a societal sense. It is. It does not lead to a healthy society. Um, I think that that is a totally separate argument as to whether or not the uh, TV show, in this case Rings of Power, is actually good. Um, you can absolutely have something that depicts characters in that way and have it be extremely well written. And if it was extremely well written, then if anything, the um, effectiveness of that kind of quote unquote propaganda, as some people might see it, it would, it would actually be even more effective if it was good. So it would be better for the audience because they get to watch something that's good, and it would be better for the people making it because they get to um, spread their propagandistic message, if you want to call it that, um, in a more effective and entertaining way. This anti-LGBT, anti-feminist Trojan horse can be difficult to spot because they'll often target stories which are truly mediocre already, like with Rings of Power. It's underwhelming whether you're a Tolkien fan or not, and people go into these videos expecting the bad things to be laid out. But what these people do is lay a series of legitimate criticisms of pacing, character, dialogue, and then slip in something like this. So before I play what Drinker actually says, Hello Future Me hasn't explicitly said this, but his, um, his perspective here definitely seems to be that channels doing what he just described is a bad thing. Um, and I'm not entirely clear on whether he means that it's bad for society, I guess. Um, or if he means that it, it it makes the video a bad review. If you're talking about, um, I don't know, r r uh, Rise of, whatever it's called, Rise of the Ring piece. Rise of Skywalker is bad um, for a whole bunch of reasons, and then also read as women, feminism, blah, blah, blah. Like, it, those are two separate points, but if you make that point, it just means that it's like, well, okay, I, don't, I, I care about this bit, but I also don't care about this bit. So it doesn't, the, the, the reing about feminism doesn't invalidate the previous thing that was said. It might inform you as to someone's motive, theoretically, but just because someone is, let, let's just say, let's just say that Drinker did go into Rings of Power in bad faith. That doesn't mean that he's wrong about anything that he says about Rings of Power. If you're motivated, um, I guess, politically to find something bad because you disagree with what you perceive as its politics, and then you find a whole bunch of legitimate as... Hello Future Me has already conceded there are a bunch of legit legitimate problems with Rings of Power. Having that perspective or approaching it with a certain set of political beliefs does not invalidate everything or anything that you have to say about the show in general. Naturally, because it's a modern day production, the male characters fall into one of two camps. They're either corrupt, selfish manipulators, or benign, unthreatening beta males who know their place and never show even a hint of agency. Benign beta males, that's a totally normal, relevant thing to say. I'm media literate. Characters not having agency is- Yeah, so I'm gonna pause it there. So here he is essentially strawmanning 
he has effectively misquoted what Drinker actually said. He's conflated what Drinker said. And the problem that Hello Future Me seems to have with Drinker is not with his criticism of Rings of Power. Um, it's with how he's framing his argument. Because Drinker's point seems to be that Rings of Power is emasculating men by depicting them in this particular manner, which I think is a fair observation. Um, it's just not one that like I particularly care about. Um, Drinker obviously cares more about that kind of thing than I do. Um, Hello Future Me summarizes Drinker's point as it's bad because benign beta males, which isn't what Drinker said. Um, I think if we're going to be charitable, what Drinker said is Rings of Power is bad because the men have no agency, and this is also bad for society because it em emasculates men. Again, two separate points. They might appear within the same sentence, but they are they are two separate points. It's bad, but it's because of benign beta males somehow. Not only is this an absolute lie, characters like Durin, Elrond, and Arendir are all perfectly fine, even traditionally masculine male characters whose actions regularly drive the plot forward. So this I find quite funny. Um, he's essentially trying to counter Drinker's comment on character agency uh, by stating that Durin, Elrond, and Elendil are perfectly fine traditional masculine characters who regularly drive the plot forward. And therefore, Drinker is wrong about what he said about the characters not having agency. So this is, I think, partly true. But the problem with going into any kind of detail with this is that we have to assume that Rings of Power is coherent, well-written, or competently written at least, let's set the bar a little bit lower, um, and that the characters' actions make sense. Because otherwise, if you're going to make any kind of comment as to whether or not Elendil is a masculine character, is immediately going to be tarnished by the fact that a lot of what he does is utter fucking nonsense. Um, so therefore, he is, he, he is being depicted in Rings of Power as being sporadically brain-dead, which is not a masculine trait. I think we can, I think everyone can agree on that. Durin and Elendil, I think, are broadly masculine characters. Elrond is not. I have no idea what he's talking about there. Um, so I don't think I agree that Durin and Elendil fit into Drinker's dichotomy because they're not corrupt manipulators and they're not unthreatening beta males. Um, as for whether they drive the plot forward, which would, well, I don't even know if I would agree with this definition, but um, Hello Future Me has essentially stated that if they drive the plot forward, then they therefore have agency, which I think is a bit simplistic, but we'll go with that for now. All of them, all three of them, drive the plot forward, and I don't know how anyone could disagree with that. Um, Hello Future Me present is presenting this as a counter to Drinker's statement that the male characters don't have agency. So with Durin, I agree with Hello Future Me because he has agency and it, the, the actions that he take that he takes drive the plot. Elendil, generally speaking, does what other characters, Galadriel and Miriel, tell him to do. So he does have some agency, but I really don't think that this counters Drinker's original point. Um, Elrond has agency, but the problem is that he spends almost the entire show just wandering around and doing things that make no sense. So calling him a character with agency is inaccurate. But it creates the impression the quality of the show is tied to things like men not fulfilling traditional gender roles, them not being man enough, not to mention there's no shortage of men who are traditionally masculine in other stories. His videos don't make sense if you want to engage in honest media criticism. And holy shit, so yeah, when, when Hello Future Me said that is when I stopped taking notes and decided that I'm just going to hit record because... I kind of can't believe that he said that, so I'm just going to rewind it so we can take it in again. In other stories, his videos don't make sense if you want to engage in honest media criticism. Hello Future Me is stating that by including statements such as uh, because this was made in current year, the men aren't allowed to be masculine because of the message, for example, which is an absolutely fair observation. But he's saying that if you include that in your review, then you are being dishonest. And he's saying that if you want to engage in honest media criticism, then Drinker's videos will not make sense. There is no honest way to engage with Drinker's comments about uh, men being emasculated in Rings of Power. Pardon my French, but that is a completely fucking idiotic thing to say. They do make sense if you have a financial interest in telling young men modern feminism has gone too far and are destroying the traditional male role in society and you should hate this. So here, what I think he's referring to is um, audience capture. So again, to use Drinker as an example, Drinker is incredibly popular and incredibly successful. He's got essentially 2 million subs on YouTube and everyone who is subbed to him 
uh, broadly is going to have some idea of what to expect when they click on one of his videos. Um, theoretically, there is going to be some pressure on Drinker when he when he makes a video covering a particular topic to present his arguments in such a way as his audience are for, are familiar with. Because again, there is a financial incentive to do so, and because um, if he completely changes his style of uh, of presentation and stops, you know, taking jabs at quote unquote wokery, um, then that isn't going to be what his audience wants to hear. However, that does not invalidate his his genuine criticisms of the show. He's covered in makeup, sitting in a tree like a 19th century boarding school girl. This is like something out of a Jane Austen novel. I'm half expecting a teenage girl to run up to him and give him some exciting news about an upcoming social event. I know wokeism demands that previously masculine men be emasculated and presented as weak and emotional, but this is just ripping the piss. Apparently- Yeah, so again, the, the comment that Despot of Antrim is making there it has nothing to do with the quality of the show. Um, whether he talks about the quality of the show in the rest of his video, I don't know, because Hello Future Me is probably not going to show us. But either way, I think that that observation that Despot of Antrim just made is an entirely fair observation. This is what they got from Elrond lying in a tree. Male elves, of course, famous for hating trees. The political filter here is so murky, so dense, he perceives an elf sitting in a tree as feminine, as weak and emotional. And this is the first point the woke bros will try to sell young men on, that male characters who used to be strong and manly are being emasculated, turned weak and emotional. This I think that is self-evidently true. I, I, don't, I don't know how you could possibly argue against that. That happens all the fucking time. And whilst like some people might be more prone to noticing it where it doesn't exist, um, or in the case of, again, the Dungeons and Dragons trailer, noticing it and being like, oh, it's going to be woke or whatever. And then the film comes out and it's actually pretty good. Like, yeah, that, that kind of thing does happen. But you surely can't deny that the phenomena that Dis Despot of Antrim is, is referring to, that exists, right? That, that, is, that is something that is blatantly observable and blatantly real. Well, don't you know about them? I I am amazed. I am amazed that he's actually making this parallel. Hold on. I'm, I'm going to let this play and just see how much of this clip he actually uses, and then I'll I'll explain it for anyone who hasn't seen 12 Angry Men. There's a danger here. These people are dangerous. They're wild. Listen. Listen. I have. Now sit down and don't open your mouth again. Now the book... <laughs> Yeah, so that particular clip in 12 Angry Men, uh, that particular juror, I forget which number he is, um, he is a blatantly racist character, and he essentially wants them to vote guilty on the, the kid who whose trial or whose fate they are deciding, um, primarily on the basis that he is of a particular race. By pasting Drinker's face on top of that character, he's essentially equating um, that sort of openly racist diatribe from that character in 12 Angry Men with Drinker's comments such as, because it's a modern day production, the male characters fall into one of two camps. They're either corrupt, selfish manipulators or benign, unthreatening beta males who know their place and never show a hint of agency. Those two things are not at all comparable. That is that is an unbelievably stupid and deceptive uh, edit to make. That's um, I'm kind of in disbelief that he's done that so boldly. Could be a joke, but it definitely... It, it, the thing is, with reading this as a joke, like, if you already agree with the sentiment that Hello Future Me is 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 pur purporting here, then you'll probably get a kick out of watching this. Be, oh, it's a drinker, he's the racist one. Like, okay, but... I mean, he isn't. So, like, what are, what are we doing here? The woke bros will also hide behind how they just want it to be more like the book, something that I genuinely do want. Okay, so before we go any further, I know that a lot of uh, the, I guess, quote-unquote woke bros, they, I'm going to say all of them, even the guys that whose videos I haven't watched, um, they are all going to care about uh, faith, faithfulness to the source material more than me. Um, I don't care at all. I think that you can make changes and it can be better or it can be worse. I think that um, if you're making like the, the P Peter Jackson's version of Lord of the Rings is the perfect example, including Tom Bombadil and including the scouring of the Shire would almost certainly have made those films worse. I don't care how faithful it is. 
However, I, I completely sympathize with people who, who, who do want it to be more faithful to the source material, because at the end of the day, it is an adaptation, which means that you should be respectful of someone else's work, because you're now taking the reins and, and taking it into a certain direction, introducing it to uh, you know new, new people who may have not read The Lord of the Rings or may not have seen the Peter Jackson films. Um, and if you completely bungle it, which, let's be clear, and I think Hello Future Me agrees with this, given the name of his video, they did absolutely bungle it. But ironically, this version of Elrond in Rings of Power is arguably closer to the one Tolkien describes in the book as as kind as summer, something that actually didn't really come through in the original Jackson trilogy. But they don't care about that, because of course they don't. The message is more important. So this, I think, is probably a fair comment. From what I have heard, uh, Hugo Weaving's version of Elrond in the Peter Jackson films is not particularly similar to Tolkien's original version of Elrond. Someone who has read the books will be able to go into far more detail than I can. But regardless, Hugo Weaving's version of Elrond is, again, it, he's fantastic in those movies. Um, and the character is brilliant. And the way the character is characterized by the actor and the script um, absolutely fits with the scenes that he's in. It, it functions perfectly within those movies. So again, it being quote unquote inaccurate or unfaithful to the source material, um, you could say led to an improvement. What I think that Hello Future Me is trying to highlight here, and we'll see if he if he actually has an example, is perceived hypocrisy among the woke bros, because they will, on the one hand, they will say, "Oh, we we want it to, we want it to be uh, all white people because that's what it was in the books," for example. Um, but then on the other hand, we'll say, "Ooh, we don't like." Elrond because he's effeminate when in the unfaithful version being the Peter Jackson films he wasn't we don't like that re so they're they're applying a double standard is what I believe Hello Future Me is appealing to here but we'll see if he has any examples painfully obvious when you actually listen to what they say in their critiques she goes to run away but then decides nah I don't know. Maybe she thinks, well, I'm a woman and women don't die in Rings of Power. And the choreography is just all over the place. Woman pulls out a knife, but in the next shot, she's abandoned the knife, so she pulls out a sword. He doesn't <laughs> get to enjoy the implausibly well-earned kill, though, because the rope snaps. He's a boy. He can't be allowed to take the glory. Again, there's a legitimate criticism of the choreography. And then all this other stuff tagged on about the roles men and women play in the scene to make it... Again, I, f I feel like this is absolutely taken out of context. I have seen... Um... I have seen Platoon's video, although it was a while ago, and I, I can't remember this specifically, but the sort of change from, like, I guess, traditional British family roles and gender roles and all the rest of it, um, I think that is absolutely a fair observation, because you've got uh, The Lord of the Rings was written by Tolkien in, well, I mean, it was released in the 1950s, so it would have been written obviously before then. Um, those would have been the values that would have been present within that book, um, which you can quite obviously see in... Peter Jackson's adaptation, because Peter, Peter Jackson's adaptation is, for the most part, faithful, and for the whole part, respectful. Rings of Power, on the other hand, has quite obviously applied a sort of more modern um, sensibility to something that did not have those sensibilities to begin with. So, on the face of it, if you just take this clip of what uh, Platoon just said, it sounds like he's just randomly complaining about why the the woman gets the kill because the boy can't and it's her turn to be empowered or whatever but i'm i'm going to hazard a guess here i'm going to i'm going to i'm going to do that thing i'm going to be charitable i'm going to hazard a guess here that this is something that platoon brings up earlier in the video and that this is one of multiple examples of this kind of thing happening say a lie enough times and people might even believe it because the woke bros know they can cherry pick scenes frame them however cherry pick i am glad you said that so um this is relating specifically to my videos because apparently i'm, a, I'm an honorary woke bro um i i did not cherry pick um the length of my videos and the amount of footage that i use from each episode virtually every line of dialogue and virtually every scene i go through in its entirety I don't omit lines that counter points that I'm making, uh, because that would be dishonest, that would be uncharitable, and because, to be completely honest, if my goal was to present Rings of Power as being something that is just the worst thing ever made, which isn't something that I believe, but Rings of Power is already bad enough that I don't need to be dishonest in order to tell people why it's bad, um, and I think that probably applies for most of the other woke bros as well. I think that claiming that they're all being dishonest because you disagree with their politics, I think that's an extremely revealing thing to say.
that they like and the hundreds of thousands of especially young men who watch their videos every week won't see how warped these interpretations are. Uh, yes, the, the poor YouTube viewer who doesn't have a brain and can't critically think for themselves. So um, I don't know if Hello Future Me does this, um, but myself and and a whole bunch of people that I speak to, um, we we watch videos by people that we disagree with. It is often good, like even even outside of the context of um, of TV shows. I listen to podcasts and interviews uh, and debates uh, with people that I just dis I disagree with on most, if not all, of what they say, um, because it helps you get better at framing your arguments and it helps you understand what you actually think. And on a lot of these topics, I honestly don't know what to think, which is why I watch them. Um, Hello Future Me seems to be thinking that people like Drinker and Nerd Roddick are sat on the pedestal and that what they say is law and that their viewers aren't going to call them out if they say something that's wrong. And I think that you, you have extremely little faith in the average intelligence of someone who's just watching YouTube videos. Man, say a lie enough times and people might even believe it. Because the woke bros know they can cherry pick scenes, frame them however they like. And also, it's amusing that you're saying cherry picking scenes and framing them how you like, because that is exactly what you do for this segment of your video. You have cherry picked scenes or clips from the woke bros uh, videos so that you can frame them how you like. And again, I find this particularly funny because my videos are not at all how you are describing, which you would know if you had watched them. And the hundreds of thousands of especially young men who watch their videos every week won't see how warped these interpretations are. Almost like they're misrep- you're, you're accusing the woke bros of misrepresenting rings of power and filling it up with propaganda, but you have done exactly the same thing. <laughs> Oh, that is so fucking funny. Oh, holy shit. Themselves. They know they won't be fact-checked, especially for just a video on you. Yeah, they won't be fact-checked. So, uh, fat, fact-checked. So, it, yeah, what, what percentage of your viewers, apart from the ones that have already called you out in your comments, are, are going to see your clip from my video and are then going to go, hmm, I might actually go and watch that video just to get the full context. Probably not very many of them, which means that as a result of your video, people have completely the wrong idea as to what my content actually is. And I would say that that very likely applies to most, if not all, of the other content creators whose videos uh, you have played clips of in, in your video in here. YouTube, but also because there are people who believe feminism is ruining society, and for them, this is just further evidence. Some of them are more transparent about the ideas they're pushing to young men, but they all do this. And when they can't warp a story to fit their narrative, then the woke bros will just straight up lie. Despite the fact that leadership in Numenor could only ever pass the male heirs in the books, hence all the talk about the line of kings. But nah, whatever. We've got to meet that quota somehow, chaps. This is a not being particularly familiar with the original source. My guess here is that Hello Future Me is absolutely correct and that Drinker made a mistake. Um, however, Hello Future Me has immediately, again, poisoned the well by telling his viewers that Drinker is lying. That is not the same as Drinker being wrong. Could you say that, like, okay, well, Drinker, you're making a video, you should probably, you like, you know, make sure that your claims are actually act. You, you could make that, you could make that assertion, but that is totally different to saying that Drinker is lying. If you're saying that he's lying, you're saying that Drinker knew that what he was saying was false, but that he said it anyway because it would fit his narrative. At one point, Awokebro insisted the only male character you could imagine capable of making love and war is Hellbrand, so no wonder he's evil, which is such a hilariously bad reading of Rings of Power and a sloganistic attempt at defining what it means to be a man. Uh, uh well, I'm wondering, is he gonna cite that claim? He didn't. At one point, Awokebro insisted the only male character you could imagine capable- Yeah, a, a woke bro. so it was one of them somewhere in, in their hundreds of hours of videos. Um, not saying that I don't believe you. I'll, I'll accept that someone probably said that. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think I, I think I'll probably agree with you. Uh, because I'm, I'm gonna be rather more charitable than you are, it seems. Um, if, let, let's just say, if Drinker said that Halbrand is the only character that he could imagine performing traditionally masculine activities, such as making love to a woman and protecting his property and being a, a dad for his kids and all the rest of it, I think that that's absolutely false. Uh, I think you could totally see Durin doing that. I think you could see Valandil doing that. I think we demonstrably see Arendir doing that. Um, in fact, yeah, Arendir would probably be the best example of that. Like, Arendir is a shit-tier character, 
but he definitely does that. The Woke Bros present you with assumptions, cherry pickings, and media illiterate interpretations, not to guide you to an accurate view of The Rings of Power or The Last of Us Part Two, but to guide you to a political opinion, a set of value judgments on real social movements in society. The reality is, at worst, there's some heavy-handed thematic messaging in some media. Like, don't get me wrong, it's there. I don't like getting hit with a baseball bat of theme either, but that's not really what their anchor is at. It's the ideas themselves. Um, I think it's very likely a combination of both. Um, I think that if something like The Last of Us 2 was like an unambiguously fantastic game, there would be far fewer people complaining about the various messages and themes that it pushes. And the people who were complaining about that would be people who primarily care about that. Um, there was a comment on my uh, first video on Arcane, which essentially said something along the lines of, it's very dangerous to like reward and talk about and praise something like Arcane because it is woke, but also because it is good. And therefore by, um, by praising something that is woke and actually good, which is quite rare, according to this commenter, um, you're essentially allowing these ideas to be um, put in people's heads whilst being packaged as a, as a TV show that is actually really, 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 really good. People like that are straight up political activists because they don't care how good or bad um, a particular TV show is. They only care if it supports their particular ideology. And I don't think that that is a fair description of any of the woke bros whose videos I have watched. And this political lens they're trying to push on people is so warped that it seems to destroy any sense of media literacy they might have once had. Allegory was a little subtle, so I'll just explain it to you like they do in this show for everything. The very white orcs were fighting with men and women who were fighting their own like a civil war. I'm surprised they didn't say the South will rise again. They went out of their way uh, okay. to make them really white. All right, in Okay, yeah, I don't I don't think that I agree with that. I did not notice. I have spent God knows how many hours watching and analyzing Rings of Power, and I just straight up did not notice that the orcs are white, um or at least I guess whiter than than they are in um in The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. And I'm going to say that that's probably because that's not where my headspace is at usually. I don't notice that kind of thing because I don't care. And I think that what yeah, I think that what Shad is guilty of here is essentially what Hello Future Me was describing earlier, where, um, paraphrasing, but he said something along the lines of these people will see uh, that their detector will be set so low that anything that is remotely, quote unquote, woke or, or appears to be purveying a particular message that they disagree with, they will detect it immediately. And they may even detect it when it doesn't exist, because I, I have no idea if the producers of Rings of Power deliberately made the orcs white because of political messaging. Maybe they did it by accident. Um, maybe they just thought, well, that's a, it, you know, it looks nice on screen because they're kind of in the shadows all the time and we want them to look visually striking. Um, if that's the reason, then OK, that's a pretty good reason, because then you're, you're basically going for the visuals above all. Um, and if someone behind the scenes was like, well, OK, but we can also, you know, that has the added benefit of showing like white people out to be bad or whatever. And then if everyone, everyone behind the camera, oh, yeah, that's that's a really good idea. We can do that as well. So not only is it going to look really good, but it's also going to further our political ideology. Then. All right. Yeah, maybe that happened. We have no idea. We will never know. But um, if Shad's point is that Rings of Power is bad because the orcs are white, then I completely disagree with him. However, I can tell you for a fact that that is not his only reason uh, for saying that Rings of Power is bad. Intentionally. And what do these orcs end up doing? Enslaving people? Ha! But there's no allegory in this. Surely not. Surely not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? I mean, put aside that the whole orc shindig is enslaving people, what, what would this allegory even mean? Well, I think it's quite obvious, and I think that you're being willfully ignorant. I think that what Shad is saying, um, quite obviously, is that he is drawing a parallel between the white orcs enslaving the elves, and the main character of whom is black. Um, he is drawing an allegory there, or a, a, a parallel, between uh, white slavers enslaving black people in the United States. In that he, in, in that the orcs have essentially abducted them, uh, held them against their will, and forced them to uh, perform manual labor 
Um, I mean, in the case of Rings of Power, it eventually leads to the destruction of essentially their country, which doesn't really work allegorically. But I mean, it, if if the writers of Rings of Power did do that deliberately, then you can't have expected them to think that far ahead because of how terrible the rest of the writing in the show is. So I think you can say that it is potentially allegorical. It's just not a very good one. That the White Orcs are Trump supporters who are whipping- What? <laughs> yes, yes, it's it's the Trumpman. It's his fault. Represent African Americans, but virtually all of whom are white, but also the Orcs are kind of sympathetic in Rings of Power, and the Orcs were also made from the Elves, and the Numenorians are also Trump supporters, remember, uh, and the Southland- I think that that scene in Numenor is the is the time in my video that I do mention Trump, uh, because I think that is blatantly obvious. This are the United States, but the elves are not from the Southlands, and they're kind of a colonial power too. And the North basically ends up losing the Civil War till the Trump supporters arrive. <laughs> it's incoherent. Yeah, it, it it is absolutely incoherent. Uh, the question that you need to ask though is: is that the fault of Shad for seeing something that maybe wasn't there? Or is that the fault of the writers of Rings of Power for being incredibly incompetent when it comes to crafting a world? My my money is on the latter, uh, because the writers of Rings of Power are incredibly incompetent when it comes to crafting a world. Regardless of whether or not Shad is on point with that actually being something that they meant to put in the show. Of course it is. These people are the living embodiment of the we demand to be taken seriously meme. Oh They're my god, so I'm on there, I'm on there, holy shit. People are the living embodiment of the we demand to be taken seriously meme. <laughs> Wait, so we've got Matt Walsh, I don't know who whatever is, or what that is. Nerdrotic Drinker, Shad, is that the, I think that's the quartering. Yeah, I'm not sure. Well, uh, I mean, what I will say here is that I don't demand that anyone take me seriously. Um, a lot of what I put in my videos is uh, is jokes. I am a guy talking about movies on the internet. I am not a pol political activist. Um, I barely know what I think about a lot of these topics. Um, and a lot of what I throw into my videos, they are jokes. They are supposed to be funny. They are, suppo <laughs> they are supposed to provoke a response because I find those responses funny. They're so obsessed with reading stuff as political allegory that they don't even come up with coherent ones. But again, that doesn't really matter to them. Their main concern is pushing you to that political opinion. This question is for all the women out there. And by the way, today I identify as a biologist. Do you feel seen in this crowd of orcs? Adar and his very white orcs want to make evil great again. I guess that would be mega. I, I don't think that that's a fair criticism. I might be wrong here, but like we never see female orcs. I guess we have to assume that they exist. Um, but they definitely in, in Rings of Power and The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings, they don't exist in any... Um, active way they don't play they, they don't play any active role in like fighting um or you know doing the the kinds of things that orcs do uh which means that if they do exist then they literally just stay at home and i guess pump out more orcs um so i think it is pretty obvious that there wouldn't be any like lady orcs in the orc army um but i guess on the flip side of that the comment that um nerd Roddick appears to be making is that this kind of, um, I guess what he's perceiving here as social engineering, the um, the producers of Rings of Power have decided, right, well, everything on the, you know, all the good guys need to be diverse. We need to have lots of women and lots of minorities in the Numenor army and in the Southlands and on the team of good. But on the other hand, we need to make sure that all of the orcs are white men. Is uh, that, that, that seems to be what he's saying. But again, putting the, the, the white thing aside, the fact that they're all men, I think, makes complete, or all male, I think, makes complete sense within uh, within the show. And congratulates his daughter, Ayari, I'm again, who doesn't exist in the books, because she just got accepted to a builder's college. What the hell does that have to do with a fantasy series? Put Tolkien aside for a second. College. That's just another social justice message. Unless that has been taken horribly out of context, I completely disagree with what uh, George the Giant Slayer just said. Um, however, Hello Future Me has not convinced me uh, at this point that he is being fair when he clips these clips. Ugh. Higher education, famously a social justice message. As everyone on the gay council knows, PhD stands for positively homosexual deviant. But they say stuff like this because Rings of Power can't just be woke. It's got to be part of this conspiracy against men in everything. I thought that was a whole part of what the whole woke thing is, like a part of the problem that people who don't like the wokery um have with woke quote unquote content is is exactly what he just described that that it is a conspiracy against 
the traditionalist straight white men. I thought that was the whole point. It can't just be woke. It's got to be part of this conspiracy against men in everything. Every yeah, I, th I feel like he's talking about the same thing twice. It can't just be this, but it must also be the same thing as what I just said. Everything has to be a social justice message to attack you, to attack traditional values, no matter how incoherent that is. I mean, Critical Drinker has a playlist of 14 videos about why modern movies suck, of which six are dedicated to quote things like, oh, oh God, uh, they hate men, <laughs> part one. <laughs> The strong female character. Yeah, uh, I mean, the names of videos are, are commonly known to be an accurate representation of, you know, the entirety of what's in them. Um, the idea of uh, clickbait is 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 not something that Hello Future Me has come up against before. I guess, um, yeah, you can you can you can look at Drinker's video that says why modern movies suck. The strong female character, and we got a picture of Captain Marvel and Ray. And you don't even need to watch it because you know that it's just going to be 11 minutes of him going re-women. That's a thumbnail and that's a YouTube title. Watch the fucking video and respond to his points. They hate their audience and they're destroying our heroes. They hate men. All of them. Every last one. Of course, this only speaks to how narrow a view of media they actually have. How narrow? <laughs> oh, okay. 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 I'm glad that I actually started recording this because I would not have been able to accurately convey this in a script. So, you are saying that the woke bros have a narrow view of media. Seconds after, you just went through the Critical Drinker's thumbnails and essentially denounced his content as all being the same thing. Have meaning they're probably not very good critics in the first place. But all the probably did, I thought you watched it. I thought you watched everyone's videos. Impression that there's this concerted effort to attack masculinity, to attack you. And if men hear this lie from a young age over and over that the very existence of the LGBT and women's rights movements these days are themselves an attack on them, then some of them will believe it. So this I think gets to why this video from Hello Future Me seems extremely scattershot and hypocritical is because he is accusing the people he has deemed the woke bros of exploiting bad media like Rings of Power to further a political message so as to convince young people to have certain uh, views on things like masculinity and women's rights and LGBT and blah blah fucking buzzword buzzword all the rest of it. So throughout this video Hello Future Me is essentially saying that the woke bros are sneaking in their political message alongside a somewhat or mostly legitimate review of bad media. What Hello Future Me believes that they are doing is shedding light on how things like Rings of Power are essentially brainwashing people with uh, their depictions of things like masculinity and feminism and all, all of the other buzzwords. Um, however, Hello Future Me doesn't seem to be realizing that he is doing exactly the same fucking thing to the, the Woke Bros videos. He appears to be saying that um, their videos are pretending to be reviews, but actually the important bit is that they're they're furthering this particular political message. And so what he is trying to do with this very video is shed light on it and reveal them as what they actually are so that young people are not led astray. He is doing exactly the same thing that he is accusing the woke bros of doing, but from the other direction. Which also means that the problem that Hello Future Me appears to have with the woke bros is not that they are talking about politics and social issues in what is ostensibly a media review. Um, it's that they have the wrong opinions. They, they, they have a different opinion to what he has, and therefore what they are saying is bad. Uh, it's bad for society, and it's up to him to correct it. Which is exactly what he thinks they're doing to Rings of Power. Ah, oh, you can't make this shit up. ...women in power. It was all horrible inequality in the past, and because it was, that justifies them oppressing men now. And they like it. Mask off moment, right? It shows what they really believe and why they frame these stories the way they do. This is fear mongering from within a very limited echo chamber view of these issues. And if you find yourself in circles where this sort of thing is being repeated, seek out other people who talk media and politics. Make sure that you talk to people who have the same opinions that Hello Future Me has, because there is only one way of looking at the world. And uh, if you don't have the same opinion that he has politically, uh, then you should you should find yourself new friends find a different perspective. This sort of thing comes from a reductionist view of media, of men and women in society, and there are better people and better ways to understand all of this. Here's the, here's the thing that I find quite funny. I don't think I agree with Shad. 
but I still would I, I would still listen to him talk about that kind of thing because I think I think he has things to say and I would not uh, you know I would not watch Shad's video on feminism or wh whatever the name of that video was and just assume that what he's saying is um evil or malicious or that he's just making it up in order to get views because of audience capture or that he's lying and that he doesn't actually believe this and that he's just saying it to make money not to mention the films they actually talk about if young men start looking at media through this lens they will see feminists and lgbt people attacking men but not because i'll be honest in some cases it's hard not to i completely sympathize with some of these channels seeing things that don't exist um because uh, a, a large part of like modern culture in particular with media has kind of made things like race and like gender it, it, it's made it the hot topic which means that you are inevitably going to be detecting things that aren't there you're going to be calling things like arcane you're going to be calling that oh it's woke because the pink hair and the like that on its own it, it might be a marker for that kind of thing but it's not it, it doesn't mean that the show is bad it doesn't mean that the show has any particular themes it doesn't mean that the show is a political piece that's trying to undermine modern culture but given when Arcane was released, I absolutely sympathize with people who had that perspective as soon as they saw the trailer. Way shows like Rings of Power can't just be bad, but have to be morally evil propaganda. They've just been pushing out sludge for the purpose of spreading propaganda. Even though the Trojan horse is often dealing with media, which is already poorly written, hence why they mix in genuine critiques of a lot of the writing too, this is where you can spot another tactic they use, intentionally misrepresenting the stories to seem dumber than they are, even when they're already bad. There's a scene in episode three where Tarmidiel interrogates Elendil. She talks about how the faithful, a faction of people loyal to the Valar and the elves on Numenor, uh, Yeah, I don't think that that's ever stated in the show. Uh, I could be misremembering, but I believe that you will only know that if you have read the books. Believe that when the petals of the white tree fall, the Vela are judging them and crying, that it's a sign Numenor has lost its way. Elendil says, In my experience, it is unwise to live one's life guessing after signs and portents. She then points out his name, Elendil can also mean elf friend. Uh, he also believes that the sea is always right, which uh, means that he absolutely believes that, like, picking up Galadriel was a sign from the sea, uh, which means that this character is... It, he's, a, he's a complete fucking mess. Then are you an elf friend? I'm a loyal servant of Numenor. Tarmidiel then asks why he would rescue Galadriel, an elf, and bring her to Numenor, to which he says... It was the sea that put her in my path. And the sea is always right. So I'm going to tell you what I think about this very briefly. It's been a little while since I've seen it, and then we'll see how Hello Future Me is going to misrepresent. Oh, <clears throat> sorry, no, I didn't mean that. We're going to see how uh, Hello Future Me is going to uh, give his uh, give his thoughts on this on this moment. So this is really dumb because it essentially uh, depicts Elendil as being an idiot who will do things that are treason because bringing bringing elves to Numenor is established as being treason. Uh, he will do that if the sea if he thinks that the sea kind of told him to do it which means that hello future me's uh, previous claims that um elendil is a character with agency are a little bit spurious because he seems to do whatever the writers want him to do and they seem to justify it by saying well it was the sea so you, what what can i do oh he also uh, he also his reason for helping galadriel is that his name means that he likes elves so he you know he help he helps elves and the sea put an elf uh, by his boat so he um yeah, that's, uh, that's Elendil in this scene, at least. And the sea is always right. See, Elendil and Tamiril are both secretly part of the faithful, trying to navigate a volatile political environment for them both. Elendil saying the sea brought Galadriel to its ship is clearly him trying to hide his true allegiance, to say it was out of his hands, just like he sidesteps the question about the white tree. Meanwhile, Tamiriel is trying to suss out if she can trust this guy. This is a literary device called subtext. Now, the work bros are only familiar with heavy-handed political allegory they dream up, so they- Okay, I have seen Rings of Power more times than- I am going to say that I have seen Rings of Power more times than Hello Future Me. I can't substantiate that, but I would love him to tell me how many times that he's actually seen the show. Um, he is obviously more um, more familiar with the source material than I am. Um, as I have said, I am largely unfamiliar with the source material, which is why I focus my videos in the way that I do. I do not recall there being a single reference to Melendil being part of the faithful and that Elendil is trying to hide his allegiance to the, the faithful ones and Muriel's trying to work out if she can trust him. 
maybe that makes some amount of sense if you have the context from the books, but I don't have the context from the books. And it is up to Rings of Power to explain that shit to me. Because if they don't, then the scene is a complete mess that makes no sense. Something being present in the books is not subtext, you fucking spoon. It's called subtext. Now, the work bros are only familiar with heavy-handed political allegory they dream up, so they might not have heard of this. But the subtext here is obvious to anyone who pays attention to the episode, which features Elendil explicitly telling Galadriel he is a friend of the elves, so you either have to somehow miss this or they're just lying about it not being there. I wonder which it is. It's like in my experience. So yeah, the link between Elendil being one of the faithful and between and between the faithful being people who like elves, that is not in Rings of Power. That is something that you could maybe make up and slot it in there and be like, oh, you know, that kind of that explains a couple of things. But that is not in the show. If that is required for the show to make sense and the writers did not put it in the show, then they have failed to adapt. Tolkien's work does not make sense and ignores obvious context and subtext and where they can't do that to manufacture a reason something is bad then they'll just talk kind of slow and scoff to give the impression it is with their tone we then learn right here we go it's me so we're going to find out how like I'm trying to brainwash the younglings with political messaging Sildor's mother and Elendil's wife she drowned there are many ways that people can die. What Rings of Power has just done, and I hope to fucking God that this was an accident, is have one character who believes deeply that the sea is always right tell another character who is wearing a full suit of armor whilst at sea and presumably unaware of the inherent drowning risk that this poses that his wife died because she drowned in the sea. They could have picked any other way for her to have died. They quite obviously don't care at all about the source material. So just say that she tripped and fell on her own shears. At least then we don't have to work out the mental gymnastics involved with Elendil believing the sea to always be right when the sea killed his wife. To uh, be as clear as I possibly can before we, uh, before we get onto his misread and misinterpretation, dare I say it, uncharitable reading of what I actually said, um, there are two criticisms that I'm making here. One is that Galadriel is wearing a full suit of plate armor while at sea, uh, which you uh, would not do, because if you go overboard for any reason, you are going to die. The show does not realize the irony of having one character say, yeah, my wife drowned, therefore putting the idea of drowning into the audience's heads while looking at a character wearing a suit of plate armor while at sea. And uh, I said it was two things. There's actually a third thing, which is that Elendil repeatedly states that the sea is always right uh, when the sea killed his wife, uh, seemingly. I guess maybe she drowned in a bathtub. That's also possible. Who knows? But yeah, those are, those are my points of criticism. Let's see what he has to say. When the sea killed his wife, it's like if CinemaSins was run by Matt Walsh. I will take that as a compliment. I, I don't quite see the similarity with Matt Walsh, I guess, but I guess Matt Walsh is a bad person and I'm also a bad person because I made a video on Rings of Power. So I guess I see the similarity there. And uh, I guess CinemaSins is typically associated with nitpick nitpickery. And uh, I guess I made 14 hours of content on Rings of Power, so therefore I'm like CinemaSins. Because actually think about what he just said there. That rings of power bad because one, a character wearing armor on a ship has a conversation with someone whose wife drowned? So that is that is possibly the least charitable thing that you've said in this entire video, my friend. Um, that is quite obviously not what I was saying. Rings of power is not bad because a woman wearing armor talked to a man whose wife drowned. If you want to talk about subtext, here's a fucking here's some fucking subtext for you, buddy. Do you not think it's rather ironic that they're discussing Elendil's drowned wife while Galadriel is standing there at a, you know, not insignificant risk of drowning herself? Uh, do you not think that maybe that might have been my point of criticism? And they might also drown if they fall in? And The problem isn't that she might drown if she falls in. The problem is that she is wearing a suit of armor while at sea that she has no reason to do beyond the props department just being like, we don't have another costume, I guess. And that therefore she is explicitly putting herself at increased risk of drowning. And two, that rings of power bad because Elendil's wife drowned and he said the sea is always right. So again, that's just a completely uncharitable read of what I actually said. So I would liken this to someone saying, I don't know, uh, God is good, God works in mysterious ways, I believe in God, blah blah blah, um, and continuing to say it after their wife died of cancer. It's like, well, 
I mean, you know, that's the Lord's plan. It's like, what, what, do you actually think that? Like, you know, there are things that you can do with a character who might be presented with that kind of like moral conundrum, like a challenge to their faith. Um, they don't do that in Rings of Power. What? I mean, we already covered how Elendil doesn't believe that, and this is further evidence. They seemingly coincidentally ignored that subtext too. And even if Elendil did believe the sea was always right in this way... Or Again, you seem to be relying on the source material to state that Elendil doesn't actually believe that the sea is always right. Because if I understand correctly, again, as someone who has not read the books and has only seen the show in excessive, an excessive number of times and in excessive detail, that... Elendil's actual reason for rescuing Galadriel when she just popped up out of nowhere in the middle of the ocean um, was that he likes elves. He's he's an ally of the elves because he is one of the faithful um, and because his name means that he likes elves. Uh, he wanted to hide that from Muriel because he wasn't sure if she if her name also meant that she likes elves. He didn't know if she was also one of the faithful. He didn't know if she was actually a friend of the elves. Um, so he wanted to cover all of that up by just saying, well... I did it because the sea's always right. So like, you know, who, who cares? You know, God put her in my path. Uh, it was out of my hands. I had to save her. It's kind of my faith kind of thing. That seems to be what he's saying. Unfortunately for him, that is not in Rings of Power. What it says is Elendil has a complex relationship with the sea. No different to the common religious sentiment that everything happens for a reason. It's so clearly intentional. So I find it very funny that he used the same example that I did. Again, if you say that like Elendil was a deeply religious man and his wife died of cancer and then he might have a crisis of faith. Okay, that's your starting point. That he, that he has conflicting values here and he's not quite sure where he's at. They don't do that at all in Rings of Power. But no, it has to be indicative of the Rings of Power being the worst thing ever made. Right? I have never stated that Rings of Power is the worst thing ever made. I think Rings of Power is terrible. I do not think it is the worst thing ever made. And Film Talk here made a 12 and a half hour long video series about Rings of Power. Um, I don't know if you can't count. I'm going to be charitable and say that you can and that this was a mistake. So uh, the total length of my video series on Rings of Power is 13 hours and 50 minutes, I think. Um, but I guess if we're rounding down, fair enough. I'm kind of surprised that you didn't round up, though, because then it would make me look like even more of an incel neckbeard full of stuff like the title card critique, the see is always right thing, and this sort of manufactured criticism. I don't believe that you've seen my videos, my friend, because if you had, then you would you would not have included me in your uh, video about the woke bros. So I, I don't believe you. Now, occasionally, these people will have genuine points about the writing or filmmaking. Even a lot of what they talk about will be that, because they want to appear objective, and they do, I assume on some level, care about the writing. Um, I am not going to speak for... I'm not going to do what you're doing here. I am not going to speak for Drinker, Despot of Antrim, Platoon, uh, Disparu, or anyone else on that list. I'm going to speak for myself. I'm not going to read into anyone else's, anyone else's intentions. The reason why I made my videos on Rings of Power is because I care deeply about Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings films. Um, I absolutely love those movies, and I watched the first two episodes of Rings of Power, and I was like, that was really, really bad, and I feel like I have things to say about it. And again, had you watched my videos, you would know that those things that I have to say have nothing to do with perceived forced political messaging. Many of them are aspiring writers. These are not exclusive things. Some of them will even preface that they're putting their political opinions aside because they want to leave you with the impression that everything they talk about is just common sense. It's objective critiques, including the stuff about gender and feminism and all that other subtext. It's, it's trying to sell young men politics under the guise of apoliticism. And I think that is fucking hell. I don't think that very many people watch videos like... Um, shads and or at least on his night night's watch channel and drinkers and nerd rotics and think that they are apolitical they are not at all pretending to just be straight down the center they they very obviously have certain political beliefs that they talk about in their videos and this informs their perspective on media that's partly why i find them entertaining to watch because i have an idea of what their opinion might be and i may have missed something because i have a different i have a different I guess if we if we want to phrase it this way, I have a different belief structure to them, um, and I'm I'm sure they have a different belief structure to each other because this isn't like people. For some reason, Hello Future Me seems to be seems to believe that people are just sort of printed out, and they accept they they scan in information that they see on YouTube and just accept it without thinking about it, and that if there's more 
of this, I guess, right-leaning political coverage masquerading as movie criticism, then it will just get scanned into the younglings' brains, and then we'll have a generation of people who think that Rings of Power is bad because it's woke. Very weird, right? Because Rings of Power is already a disappointment. A real critic doesn't have to make up more flaws than there are. They don't have to lie about the source material. Um, again, he is presuming that the woke bros are lying, which is somewhat uncharitable, my friend. It was the demise of the superhero movie last year, and, you know, that really became the, the benchmark for, I guess, woke politics being pushed into movies um, when, it, when you look at uh, the Marvel stuff that had been coming out. Um, I think they got away with it up until a point, and then last year was really the point where it all reached critical mass and everyone just um, really rejected it. Uh, so again, I think that is absolutely a fair observation, um, and I think it is not just incidental that the broad quality of Marvel films has drastically decreased as what Drinker has described as the wokery has increased. Um, I don't think that's incidental. I think it's because... Um, Largely, you have uh, up-and-coming writers who maybe haven't worked on too many projects. Um, they have a particular set of political beliefs, and they care more about inserting those political beliefs into a story than writing a good story. And because that is what, uh, I guess, Disney is interested in doing, that is why they get hired, and then they wonder why they don't make any money. Because fundamentally, they're political pundits before they're media critics. And that is, that is a ridiculous thing to say. Both of those guys, as far as I'm aware, started off as media critics. Um, I don't think it's unreasonable to expect them to not talk about politics if they have deeply held beliefs and they're noticing um, drastic changes in certain messaging that they find to be inappropriate within media. I think calling them political activists first and movie critics second, I think that's... Uh, I think that is... I think that is rather uncharitable. And in their minds, there's this near perfect correlation between the values they think a production promotes and the quality of the writing. Well, I mean, not always, but like I just explained with Marvel, I think that's indisputable. I, I don't know how you could counter that. The more egregious the feminism or wokeness or LGBT representation or male emasculation, the worse the writing has to be. It should come as no surprise that all of these channels, Critical Drinker, Shadowversity, Despot of Antrim, Random Film Talk... He named me! He, na he actually explicitly named me on the list. Oh my god. Okay, so what's he gonna- what's he actually gonna say? It's that all of these channels, Critical Drinkish- What am I guilty of? of Antrim, Random Film Talk, The Quartering, Heels of His Babyface, Georgia Giant Slayer, Ben Shapiro, Neurotic- all Ben Shapiro! <laughs> I'm on the same list as Ben Shapiro, that's amazing. I'm just this little guy with like 40,000 subs who likes talking about movies, but because- well, TV shows. Uh, but because I talked about the wrong one, I'm on a list with Ben Shapiro, that's amazing. All pushed the idea that the film Barbie is the worst thing ever made as well, with terrible writing. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah, so I did talk about Barbie. Let's see if he has anything to say about it. Barbie, a hot pink mess. Barbie, feminist disaster. Barbie, so woke it devolves into satire. Barbie, now I am become feminism destroyer of world. Barbie, the greatest lie ever told. And it goes on and on and on. Oh, he didn't put my thumbnail in. Hmm. I was very tempted to not make my Barbie video because I don't really like talking about politics in movies. The problem is that Barbie, like I, I had things that I wanted to say about Barbie and I thought, well, I'm not going to just not say them because I think I have enough here for a video and I, and I, and I would like to make it. Um, the problem that I had is that Barbie is an overtly political movie. Wh whether it's good or bad, it is overtly political. And that means that as soon as you start talking about it, you have to start talking about feminism. It's just unavoidable because the, the movie is about feminism. And uh, I think I say, like, explicitly, one of the first things that I say is that, like, I'm not going to complain about how the film is woke because I, like, I hate using that word because everyone just has different definitions as to what it means and they, they just, they, they see a problem and they insert the word woke in to describe why it's a problem and then leave it at that. And I hate doing that. On. And they lambasted for its writing with all the same tactics we've already discussed. Because regardless- Barbie is a badly written movie. ...of how woke or cringe you think Barbie is, it's a perfectly competent comedy film with a very clear message. A uh, it undermines its message repeatedly. Where are we going with this? Message that is even pro-male. It's not perfect, 
but it's fine. But it's the politics. The message is not overtly pro male. So at the end of at the end of Barbie, um, the the women take over again, and the Kens are like, "Oh, can we be on the Supreme Court, please? Can we just have like one Supreme Court justice?" And it's like, "Well, nah, you know, you know, the, the women basically say, nah, you can, we'll, we'll make a like a different job for you, like you know, we've got this handled, kind of thing." And it's obviously, you know, it's a joke. Um, it's clearly a joke, but the joke just completely undermines the idea that the film is um anything other than pro women and anti men because the way the movie depicts barbie land versus reality is that like reality the men are in charge and everyone just knows that that's just a truism that everyone knows in barbie land it's the other way around the women are in charge and the men are you know, perform the role the role of the women essentially and in the context of the film barbie the um the barbies all have like quote unquote proper jobs like they're you know diplomats they're presidents they're pilots they're doctors they're all the rest of it whereas the kens don't it's like you've got beach ken you've got volleyball ken you've got i guess football ken water skiing ken why should the kens be on the supreme court that that doesn't make any sense you would want the people qualified to be on the supreme court and because of the way that the film depicts barbie land as like an inverse parallel of reality the joke i i assume inadvertently because it again undermines what a lot of the rest of the film seems to be about the joke seems to be suggesting that in the real world, women should not be on the Supreme Court because they are not qualified to be on the Supreme Court. Politics they care about most, not the writing, despite what they say. And when you actually take a step back, when you look at this all together, this kind of critical vomit is transparent about what it's trying to do. It's no surprise half of them also lambasted episode three of The Last of Us. I find this, this is so fucking funny. So... I I think that episode three of The Last of Us is the best episode of the series. I, uh, yeah, uh, on my second, I haven't decided which channel I'm going to upload this onto, but if you want to know my thoughts on episode three of The Last of Us, I recorded a podcast when it came out with my friend Ryan, and he, he knows the games like really well, which I don't. And we basically just, uh, yeah, we discussed the episodes. And I I think he pretty much agreed with me that like in terms of like an hour of entertainment, episode three is the best episode of The Last of Us. I find it very funny that he's put me in with, who is this? Shad As and Community Notes. I don't even know who Community Notes is, but yeah. So he's put a video there with 1.4 thousand views um, up there with a video from Shad and As, because I guess he couldn't find a more relevant one from that had more views, I guess. As terribly written or terribly paced, the episode, of course, centered around a gay love story. The bottom line is these stories can't be allowed to be good or enjoyable because they know that if people do enjoy these stories, which they imagine as undermining gender roles or traditional values, then people are actually going to be more accepting of this stuff in real life. Of course, none of this means alternative... Again, you're completely... Hello Future Me is completely undermining his points here because he is accusing them of being and me by proxy well not even by proxy he's acu he's straight up accusing the woke bros which includes me of being political activists who care more about whether or not something is woke than whether it's actually good but he is also demonstrably acting as a political activist in this video he is cherry picking from our videos and fighting against them because he believes that we're spreading the wrong message perspectives don't have something to offer. YouTuber JJ McCullough talks Canadian history and politics and sometimes film and TV with a political lens. And I don't always agree with him, but his videos offer an interesting and diverse insight from another perspective. And importantly, he doesn't need to lie about the source material to fit his ideal. There it is again, lie. Why can't they honestly have these beliefs that you disagree with? But there is a whole other half to this ideology they're pressing on young men. It's not just that men aren't allowed to be real men anymore, but that women aren't allowed to be real women. So, um, there is a... I mentioned earlier that there is a segment of the video of, of Rings of Power and my videos on Rings of Power where I discuss the, the problems of girl, uh, girl win becoming a bro boss, Bronwyn becoming a girl boss. If you want to, if you want to see that, I'll stick a link in the description. I think it's at the video, at the beginning of uh, video number five, but, um, yeah, I'm interested to see if he pulls out any any parts of that in his video here, because um, my comments on that completely undermine what he's saying. Badass Galadriel, who's now a sword swinging, orc killing, fist fighting, hard drinking, all conquering, strong female character. Because I guess the idea of having a female protagonist that can't fight and kill and punch just as hard as a man is to modern Hollywood what facts, logic, and common sense are to a liberal arts professor. Again. <laughs> Drinker certainly has a way with words. Um, 
it, one, that's obviously a joke. Two, that is obviously a fair, a, a fair observation. Very weird things to say, right? But it's this idea. It's a joke. And again, in the case of Drinker, you could absolutely say that he's playing up a character. That's what he is. That, 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 that's, that's what the Drinker element is. That female characters can't be feminine, gentle, beautiful, mothers, wives, nurturing, pure, because neither are women in society. They'll never say it, but submissive is in there too. It's the opposite of Elrond to them. They're turning women into men. But you know what? Fine. Let's ask... Well, I mean, again, Bronwyn being the example, they they are doing that. And I explicitly say in my in my video on that topic, I don't have a problem. I don't have the same problem that Drinker just described, because I don't have a problem with Galadriel, as depicted in Rings of Power, being able to do all of the shit that, that she does. And I'm going to guess that Drinker doesn't have a problem with that either. What he has a problem with, I'm going to guess, is the societal implications of depicting women like that repeatedly and yeah, what that will what that will essentially mean for society going forwards. The problem that I have specifically is is when you do that with characters that should not be able to do that, namely Bronwyn. I don't care that Galadriel can do that. I do care that Bronwyn can do that because it does not make any sense in universe. Now the Woke Bros will insist they're only concerned because they want stories to be adapted faithfully, like I do, and Galadriel isn't like this in the books. In fact, they're so dedicated to Tolkien's words that prior to Rings of Power's release, they inundated it with millions of comments of the famous Tolkien quote, evil cannot create anything new, they can only corrupt and ruin what good forces have invented or made. A quote which really shows their love for Tolkien's words and words. Just kidding, Tolkien never wrote that. The quote is entirely made up. It's from the Evil is Sterile TV Tropes page. Okay, cool. So that completely inv invalidates the sentiment and it also invalidates all of their criticism. Which even tells you Tolkien didn't write it. But they don't care. Words don't mean anything. Tolkien said plenty of stuff like that, but it's crazy that so many people who purport to care so deeply about about Tolkien's words, didn't use one of the many other times he did say stuff like this. But okay, putting aside the myriad of other female characters who do lean into a traditional kind of femininity. Ha again, just to remind you, the female characters in Rings of Power that do lean into traditional femininity, we've got arguably Poppy, but I think I would dispute that. Uh, we've got Marigold, maybe, which is Nori's mother. No, 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 no. 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 Uh, Deesa. Yeah, Deesa I would say probably does. So that's one definite, two maybes. That's the best we got. What does Tolkien actually say about Galadriel at this point in her life? Well, here's some context. Well, first let's look at how he described Eowyn, a woman who went to war and wielded a sword. He wrote, Though not a dry nurse in temper, Eowyn was also not really a soldier or Amazon, but like many brave women was capable of great military gallantry at a crisis. And take a look at the word Tolkien uses there. Amazon, referring not to the giant corporate conglomerate who feeds on the blood of its workers. Could you not say that that's political messaging? <laughs> uh, hello future me, you don't have any self-awareness. He uses this word to describe two characters. The first one is the warrior queen Haleth, a quote, renowned Amazon, who kept a whole bodyguard of female warriors. And the second is guess who? Galadriel was then of Amazon disposition and bound her hair as a crown when taking part in athletic feats. But more than that, we know from these quotes that she participated in and took command of Elvish forces in numerous battles. While her wisdom yeah, cool, fine. So I, the point that he's making here is that it actually isn't completely inaccurate to depict Gadriel, uh, Gal Gadriel to depict Galadriel as a quote unquote girl boss. Um, the problem that I would have, as I have said before, is that the character is terrible, not that she's a girl boss. The problem that I think, uh, most possibly all of the other quote-unquote woke bros have with Galadriel is the specific characterization, the mannerisms, the general behavior of Galadriel. Um, it is absolutely possible to depict a character as described, the, the, the description that he's giving now uh, that Tolkien gave of Galadriel, Galadriel during this era. Um, you can absolutely depict that in a way so as to have it not come off as quote-unquote girl bossy. A large part of that is in the reactions of the other characters to their behavior. So the problem isn't that, well, she's got, you know, she wears armor and she has a sword and she is like an Amazon and she fights and stuff, which isn't very ladylike or whatever. Because again, as, as, as Hello Future Me is correctly pointing out here, that is, broadly speaking, accurate to the source material. And if you care about the source material, that doesn't inherently mean that you have to like uh, the fact that Galadriel is depicted in this way. Because there is a world of difference between 
warrior woman or how how exactly did yeah there we go so we got the world the words on screen right there quotes that she participated in and took command of elvish forces in numerous battles and while who yeah okay so there is a world of difference between that the this sort of warrior woman archetype and galadriel in rings of power they are not the same thing but it's here we find another tenet of this ideology they're trying to sell to young men now this is a recent thing with the rise of modern feminism which is why these same people will also praise the original lord of the rings trilogy for not being woke at all because in their minds lord of the rings is the so i think i know what he's getting to and i think he's getting to eowyn um and i think that that is an unbelievable mischaracterization of what actually happens in the lord of the rings um however and maybe he will say this pretty much word for word. I don't know. Um, I think that if the if if Rings of Power and The Hobbit never existed, and Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings were to come out now, you would absolutely, in the culture that we live in, get people sort of having a, having a knee jerk reaction to the "I am no man" scene, and then Eowyn killing the Witch King. Um, people responding to that and calling it woke, and that it was forced, and all the rest of it. Uh, whether it was in the source material or not, because um, if you're having that kind of reaction, then you may not care. The fact that people responded like that, though, I, it doesn't that's not necessarily unreasonable. And if anything, it just shows you the, the way that culture has definitely shifted since 2003, when, uh, when Return of the King came out, to now, 2024. So that's 21 years. And had that scene come out now, culture is drastically different. You would absolutely get... Uh, false positives on your is this woke test and i don't think that that's necessarily the fault of the people making the accusation i think it's completely understandable that they would have false positives products of an untainted time yeah i think we're all old enough to remember the 90s and the 2000s where big action movies were all the rage and you know they by and large were not particularly political and they they weren't out to pander to people or anything like that terrorism is acceptable when all options for peaceful settlement have been foreclosed when of course the shift towards that's a that's an example that it, you see it makes it makes it sound like drinker didn't know what he was talking about because drinker made it sound like he was saying that like no movie does that and then he showed an example of when a movie did that so drinker is wrong gender and race understanding media has been happening for over a century this is a sort of anchoring bias bandwagon effect settled bias where because they grew up with lord of the rings because it's long been accepted that they perceive it as reasonable but i'm a firm believer that the best predictor of behavior is looking at past behavior and luckily i have a palantir here which allows us to see how they would have reacted if lord of the rings came out i think he's going to do exactly what i just said today so come with me on that unexpected journey. My fellow patently evil friends, I told you years ago that hack- <laughs> That was quite funny, actually. What's his thumbnail? My fellow- Is he- I think he's drinking milk. <laughs> That's quite funny. Evil friends, I told you years ago that Haxon's Lord of the Borings would be a giant disaster flop. And guess what? We were right. Because already it's being ruined by wokest politics just the way we knew it would be because the pale male is stale and we need more girl boss girl power, you know? Because these hacks can't tell any story these days without trying to push a message. So uh, something that I think he's about to talk about this, but he's obviously going to caricature it. So um, in the books, um, I can't remember the character's name, but um, it was a male elf that carries Frodo to Rivendell, not Arwen. And the reason why they decided to include Arwen in this scene is there's two reasons primarily. One is because the film already has a shitload of characters and they didn't want to introduce a new one to just do one thing and then not be seen again. And two, it's because the uh, love story between Arwen and Aragorn, they wanted to flesh out a little bit because they felt it was appropriate to the story, primarily to Aragorn's journey, not Arwen's. And in order to do that, you add a few more scenes with Arwen, Arwen and Aragorn together. And because Arwen is going to be there when, when after Frodo gets stabbed, uh, it makes sense to then have her be the person to ride him to, um, to Rivendell. Another example is their plan originally was to have Arwen present at the Battle of Helm's Deep, um, which I am so fucking glad that they did not do, um, which essentially means that in that battle, you've got um, Arwen is not there. You've got Eowyn, who's looking after the women and children in the caves, um, and she resents that. And thankfully, because they did not have either Arwen or Eowyn taking part in the Battle of Helm's Deep, it makes Arwen's actions in the Pelennor Fields that much more impactful, uh, both purely narratively, if we're talking about the story, but also specifically because of her character journey. Um, the previous time this happened, 
she was basically told, no, you gotta you gotta sit back and let the men do the fighting. You've gotta do the womanly thing and look after the women and children in the caves. Um because that's kind of your job. And she's like, well, no, I can I can be of more use than this. And then she realizes that at the Palinor Fields, it's like, okay, well, this is this is kind of it, because if we lose here, then we're just done. Which essentially means that what ends up happening in film three, it builds off of the fact that she was not doing what she wanted to be doing in film two. Um yeah, those are your reasons. But you could you you could take that and caricature it and be like, oh, they they did the women did the fighting and stuff, so it's bad. Which is, yeah. Um, that's what that's what he's doing now, because that's what that's what the woke bros do, which apparently includes me. But one key difference, which I feel I should highlight here, woke or not, like I don't I don't care. Rings of power is terrible. The Lord of the Rings is like a masterpiece. And I think that that on its own would would explain the difference in reaction to it, even if there had not been a drastic cultural shift in the last 21 years. And feel free to provide me with an example if you think that I'm wrong on this, but um, I would need to see a film or TV show that is really, really, really good, we're talking Lord of the Rings level good, that came out the last couple of years, where the response from people like Nerd Roddick and Critical Drinker and Shad was re this is woke it's really really bad when actually it's not and that they were completely wrong on their take um because they're because of political biases show me that example and then this caricature that hello future me is doing um holds a little more water because right now it holds none instead of glorfindel saving frodo and carrying him to rivendell one of tolkien's most beloved and powerful male characters They've turned Arwen into a Captain Marvel girl boss who don't need no man and made it so that she, and hear me out, she's- Again, I know he's doing a caricature, so it may well be deliberate that he's made this fuck up. She literally sacrifices her immortality for a man. So the, the, she don't need no man is, <laughs> is a rather amusing statement. I think it's also amusing here, the difference, because I, I love the way that like the three, uh, <laughs> three, only three, uh, female characters are depicted in the Peter Jackson Lord of the Rings movies. I love it. Like, I don't, I don't care if it's different to the books. Um, however, I hate the way that Tauriel is depicted in the Hobbit movies. And it's very funny to me that in the behind the scenes footage, they seem to have completely, that the writers and producers seem to have completely forgotten why the female characters worked so well in the Lord of the Rings, because they explicitly say, again, I'll be paraphrasing here because I can't remember the exact quote, but um, we felt it, that The Hobbit was a really blokey story and that we wanted there to be women so that there's, you know, there's women in it as well, which which is the entire reason why the character of Tauriel was created and given the plot prominence that she is given within those movies, which is, of course, not in the books at all, um, which essentially means that by deciding that it there are too many men in the story for some reason... They ended up shoehorning in a badly written female character into the Hobbit movies whose primary role is to act in an extremely contrived love story. And it's it's difficult to uh, believe that it, the same people who made that decision uh, made the various decisions that I explained just now involving Arwen and Eowyn. In the book, she has this whole amazing speech which brings up how she's Theoden's daughter and brave, but no, that doesn't matter. All that matters is girl power. She's a woman. In the film, they completely erase the fact that the only reason the witch king was able to die was because Miri stabbed him with an important magical blade. None of that's in there. It's only because Eowyn is a girl boss. And they give Eowyn this cheesy, terrible one liner that doesn't even come close to how Tolkien wrote. It's just bad writing, all of it, but they don't care because. They well, no, so this is where his caricature completely falls on its ass. This is really good writing. Uh, but he's pretending that it's bad because the woke bros will take things that are good and pretend that they're bad. They'll lie and say that it's bad when it's not because of political messaging, which is obviously a ridiculous caricature because it's just, I, I think it's obviously untrue. I think that like the, the starting point that you have to have when speaking to anyone or, or when like watching a video made by someone that you disagree with, you, you have to believe that they believe what they're saying. Um, unless you have seen overwhelming evidence to the contrary, which I flatly do not think exists for any of the people that he mentioned, at least out of the ones that I've seen. Um, I believe that they are honest in in what they say and in what they believe. It's just activists masquerading as screenwriters. And even worse, Peter Hackson could not allow Aragorn to be the noblest man in Middle Earth, which is how Tolkien wrote him, because noble men aren't allowed to exist anymore, are they? Instead, he's meant to be this coward, running away from his destiny, afraid of who he is, because of course he is. He's a white guy, just like Mary. In the books, Aragorn is ready to take the throne from the start. He's a positive icon of masculine traits. He's ready to lead, he's ready to kill when he has to. But no, instead he has to be a limp, benign beta cuck who doesn't want to be king. You see how easy it is to twist it to sound like that? Yeah, the bit that you miss out, though, again, is that The Lord of the Rings is really, really, really good, and Rings of Power is really, really, really bad. 
So again, if you want to provide me with an example of something that has come out in the last few years that is Lord of the Rings level good, or that's a high bar, let's just say it's like I extremely good. Let's, let's lower the bar to just extremely good. And then show me all of the woke bros disparaging it because it's woke. Show me that. And you know what? This belief that Rings of Power is somehow the wokest thing ever made is incredibly funny when you realize which awards Rings of Power actually won, okay? So Amazon- Rings of Power won awards? This is fucking news to me. Amazon series only won 10 major awards, only one of which had anything close to do with the writing. It won the Best Mature Television Award from Movie Guide, which I kid you not, describes itself as a beloved celebration of faith and values-driven entertainment to honor faith and family films, otherwise known as the Christian Oscars. <laughs> uh, okay, so I've never heard of whatever it is that he's describing there. Uh, whether it's fair to call it the Christian Oscars, I have absolutely no idea. Television award goes to shows which, quote, contain strong moral and redemptive themes. And it was also nominated for the, I kid you not, Faith and Freedom Award for promoting American values and the opinion. Yeah, so he's basically saying, look at these awards that he that, that Rings of Power won, which support my, my opinion of Rings of Power. Um, which is essentially like me saying, well, come on, like, Black Panther isn't a bad movie. Look how many Oscars it won. That's a, that's a stupid argument. And it also gets funny when you realize the two showrunners, Payne and McKay, are devout Mormons. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, famously known for its liberal agenda. Uh, I mean, you say that as if they're not the writers. Um, there are like let, there, there are absolutely people who could have been involved in Rings of Power, who may have wanted to turn Elrond into a femboy, and Payne and McKay would not have been able to stop them. That is absolutely something that is possible. The writers, in particular, in something like Rings of Power where the writers basically have no credits, the writers do not get to make those kinds of decisions. Uh, th this is not Quentin Tarantino, this is not Christopher Nolan. Matter when you can wrench these shows to mean whatever you want them to in your political agenda. Not only is Rings of Power barely woke, but it embodies a largely conservative, even Catholic view of the world. Oh, uh, Your Honor. Huh? Oh, I, we rest our case. All oh, right, yes, uh, uh, court, court adjourned. I forgot I was doing the whole courtroom thing. Part of what makes Rings of Power such a mask off moment for these people is how clearly and obviously wrong they are about the show. Because, like, they started saying all of this stuff for months before the show ever dropped. I, yeah, so I will agree with him on this point that making those kinds of declarative statements before the show is even out. So yeah, I don't understand really when like channels on, on either side, to be honest, you know, even before you get the trailer for, for Rings of Power, and I'm rather looking forward to the trailer for season two. Uh, but even before you get the trailer, when you uh, get the reveal of the cast, like who's playing who, and then you um, you get you, you get channels will will post videos basically complaining about it before it's before it's even come out because uh, Sildor's played by a brown person. Okay, I I sympathise with what Hello Future Me is saying in this uh, in on this point, uh, but he has absolutely cast his net way too wide in trying to catch the people um, or in trying to call out the people that he thinks are doing this kind of thing. Critical Drinker has spoken many times about the loss of the stoic man, the unemotional, immovable man, unaffected by the world, who does what needs to be done when the time requires it. Which is a very funny thing to say for a man whose videos are mostly deeply emotional reactions to largely unimportant details in television and film. Especially because the stoic man has been the central figure of two of the most popular shows of the last decade. And sure, if you want, you can find those- if, like, if you have the same perspective that Drinker does and you're, I guess, mourning the loss of the quote-unquote stoic men, and uh, Hello Future Me is like, oh, no, it's, it's not, you know, it's all right. We, st we still got, you know, we got The Mandalorian and we got The Witcher, which are both terrible. Those, uh, those two examples wouldn't really mean a huge amount to me in order to combat my perspective that we'd, uh, that we'd lost the stoic man. Chad Brooks is an ultra-conservative Mormon whose anger at these stories is not rooted in reality, but in religious dogma, in divine laws that dictate how men and women should be and behave. Right, but you know that going into his videos. I don't, I, I, I don't think he hides that. I, st I, I think it's probably unfair to characterize him as like an extreme right-winger or whatever it is that you just said, but he's not, he's not trying to trick anyone. He's not hiding his, his own personal beliefs. He's giving you his perspective and his audience of almost certainly aware of what his uh, what his i guess core beliefs are
that women have a moral duty to cover up, to be mothers, to have children, to be submissive, while men have a moral duty to be warriors, to be leaders. Is he allowed to think that? Or is, uh, is Hello Future Me going to tell, gonna tell Shad that he's not allowed to think to have those religious beliefs or that um, if he has those religious beliefs, then it invalidates his opinions on other topics? Like, I don't agree with, with that. If, if that is what Shad actually thinks, I don't agree with that at all. Does that mean that Shad's wrong about Rings of Power? If you squint, in the show, Hellbrand slash Sauron sort of asks Galadriel to be his wife? You bind me to the light, and I bind you to power. No, wait, ah, oh, for fuck's sake, you've got to play the right clip if you're going to do that. Uh, he says, I will make you a queen. The obvious implication, the, the implication there is obvious. It was a choice, uh, not a good one. It's very why factor, uh, but she rejects him because uh, she's married and he's the dude who killed her brother. But the woke bros try- Well, I don't know. I, can you say that she's married? Because, um, uh, damn, what's his name? Celeborn, he kind of went missing and she didn't go and look for him. So he's presumed dead. We, we, have to, we have to assume that she thinks he's dead. Try to sell this as being another heavy-handed political allegory, this time for incels. That it's saying- Okay, I have not heard this at all. I have no idea what this could possibly have to do with incels. <laughs> to this group of men, see, you're just like Sauron, turning evil after you're rejected by women. Of course- <laughs> That's amazing. If that's actually a narrative that was, uh, if, if, if that's actually a topic that was discussed, I find that hilarious. Uh, that didn't even register to me. Hellbrand is not an incel allegory. It's just not in the text. This is another attempt- Sauron is an incel, holy shit at an incoherent political allegory, but painting rings this way allows the woke bros to exploit the pain this men feel by giving them someone to blame for their loneliness. You are being ostracized and vilified because women these days don't want real men like you anymore, just like Hellbrand. They want benign beta males or chads who treat them terribly. You being single is their fault. You are struggling today because of modern feminism, because men aren't allowed to be men. See, this argument here is absolutely a stretch. Um, the problem is that because I haven't heard this argument before, and because of how a lot of what Hello Future Me has said has just been straight up dishonest, uh, it, it, not that I necessarily think that he's lying, but he's absolutely colouring um, uh, what people are saying and poisoning the well, whether he realises he's doing it or not. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to take his word for it on uh, on how this whole incel Sauron thing came about be the stoic decisive working leading providing man anymore because they want to be girl bosses who get off on oppressing men who don't want to nurture anymore that's why they hate you that's why you're feeling this way even if it isn't true these people want to narrow the lens through which you understand media like rings of power so i would have a question for hello future me and i would be very interested to hear what he had to say if the uh, creators of rings of power just straight up came out and said yeah, no, that, that is absolutely an agenda that we're pushing. Um, we absolutely wanted to destroy the nuclear family and defund the police or whatever the, the talking points are. I can't remember. Um, yeah, if they came out and said that, would your response change? Gender roles are inherently valuable in this ideology, and so the LGBT or women's rights movements are inherently dangerous. And it's underpinned by this idea that men are threatened if women are allowed to share in the traits typically reserved for men. Why do you think women stay behind with children? Because they're weaker? No, someone needs to take care of the children. But ladies, you have achieved equality. Now you're as disposable as men. Do you feel seen? But that's the big- That scene is so fucking funny because Bronwyn just gets that woman killed and then it's never mentioned again. <laughs> If anything, that's an argument by, by why women shouldn't be doing the fighting. The biggest difference between writers today and writers of a now bygone era. Ladies, women, uh, we used to leave you out of the battles and strong roles because you're just so indispensable, so valuable, and someone has to be our breeding star, I mean, uh, wives. And now media is taking you off your- Well, I mean, if you want to phrase it that way, then we can say that sure, women are the breeders and men are the ones who go out and die by the millions in war. Like, you can, you, can, you can phrase it however you like. Comfy pedestal to make you as low and disposable as us men. See? You don't want our roles as warriors and heroes. You're meant to be our prime- See, he, uh, <laughs> he's taking the, I guess, right-leaning idea, he'd probably call it far right, I don't know, um, that men are supposed to defend women. And he's phrasing it in probably the least charitable way possible. 
prized cat, I mean our wives. Of course, being a wife or mother is beautiful too. There's a lot of power in it and a lot of people find real purpose in it. There's a lot of stories to tell, but that's not really the messaging in the Woke Bros videos here. And what these people are actually telling these young men is deeply cruel and wrong too. You are not more disposable because you are a man. You are not worth less because you are a man. What a terrible idea to push. Sounds to me like you're being just as much of a political activist as uh, you believe that the Woke Bros are. They sell this all as a positive ideal of masculinity to live up to, but not these subtexts that it's shameful not to. You don't want to be a benign beta male, do you? You don't want to be queer. You don't want to be like a girl, do you? I am- Well, again, that's that whole thing is based on the idea that like men should have positive, uh, dare I say, masculine role models. Um, that is beneficial for them. It is beneficial for society and it's also beneficial for women. That's where that whole idea comes from. And th again, the, he will never phrase it like this because he of course disagrees with that sentiment, but that, that would be where that argument comes from. It's a biological essentialism that we moved past a long time ago as a species. Human society and people are so much more complex than that. The woke bros all push different degrees of this, but I saw- Do I, I, ooh, what degree of it do I push? I would love to know what degree of this I push. Could it be none? All of this reflects a broader ideological rise of people like Andrew Tate, Matt Walsh, Michael Knowles, the Whatever Podcast, Jordan Peterson, which young men are getting swept up in. All of whom- And all of those people are, of course, terrible and we need look no further. They, none, of, none of them have anything useful to say. They're all, they're all just the generic bad person that you need to not listen to. You need to listen to Hello Future Me instead. I am going to just throw this out there. I think that Jordan Peterson very likely has far more useful insight in uh, the field of like gender roles, being, you know, a psychologist, uh, than you do. Just, uh, just throwing it out there. Much like I, I would hope, given, given that you are a, uh, a film review YouTube channel, um, that you have more to say than Jordan Peterson does on the topic of, um, on the topic of reviewing movies. It's the same reason why I don't listen to like political guys, like straight up political guys, like, like Ben Shapiro, for example, who I don't know why anyone would care what Ben Shapiro thinks about, you know, the Star Wars movies. Like I, I would only listen to that if I just wanted to kind of, I guess, laugh because it might, it might be entertaining, but I would not take Ben Shapiro's comments on Star Wars seriously. Maybe he'll surprise me. Maybe he'll give me some insight that I did not know because uh, people's brains do not all work in the same way and different people are going to pick up on different things. This is why I think that talking to people or listening to people like um, like Drinker, for example, about something like Rings of Power, you are going to get way more valuable insight um, if you are someone who just straight up likes good TV shows um, than listening to someone like Ben Shapiro or Matt Walsh because those guys are political commentators first and they're not even they're not even movie guys second they're just not movie guys which means that everything that they that that they say about rings of power is going to be almost certainly from the from the perspective of how does this support what i think um do i agree with the messaging of this show rather than is this show good by whatever those other criteria might be that we all you know agree and disagree on um whereas someone like drinker um, he absolutely cares about the same kind of thing, like Ben Shapiro and Matt Walsh might care about. Whether he primarily cares about that, I, I don't think so. Um, and that's definitely not all he does. So when, when Hello Future Me says that like Drinker will, um, it, he's almost depicting people like Drinker as being a Matt Walsh or a Ben Shapiro in disguise. That's what he actually is, and that's what he would say if he could get away with it. But for some reason, despite him, I mean, I don't know how many, how many subs does Matt Walsh have? Let's have a look, because I want to say Drinker probably has more. Uh, okay, no, Matt Walsh has more, fair enough. Um, yeah, so maybe, who knows, maybe maybe when Drinker gets another 0.85 million subscribers, then he can start saying what he actually thinks. These people profit off selling you a narrative that the world hates you and your only refuge is people like them. There are lots of people who engage with criticism honestly and intelligently. Daniel Green, Amanda the Jedi, Obi Sarcastic Productions, Ruff the Movie Maker, Woman Carrying Man, Quinn's Ideas, Like Stories of Old, Savage Books, Nando V Movies, all of whom are genuine and intelligent critics and amongst them are much better male role models. Because male role models do- So do they not, do they not 
touch on political issues or do they just touch on it from the direction that you like? The sad thing is a lot of these people do genuinely want to be good critics. Some of them are writers themselves, but these biases, this warped understanding of these issues of society is getting in the way of them doing that. And they're dangerously handing that off to a lot of young men who might pick it up after them. And to be clear, do not harass critics, drink on an erotic chat or any of the others. Do not be that person. Aragorn would not be that person. I want them to be better. Millions of people go to YouTube for media criticism, a place where there is no checking for bias, there is no fact checking. And so we need to hold both ourselves as YouTubers to a higher standard and hold the people we watch who have millions of subscribers and a lot of influence to that higher standard. These people may genuinely believe what they say about society, but that doesn't make it true. I mean, it could be true. You could be wrong. And it, it, it's good that you've waited until three hours and 30, three hours, 33 minutes and 38 seconds to extend that lovely olive branch and suggest that, hey, maybe Shad actually believes what he's saying. After poisoning the well, what, seven or eight times in the last two hours of this that I've been watching, I think, um, and suggesting repeatedly that everyone who says what they say is just lying. Maybe Shad believes it. Maybe Shad believes it. Maybe the people who didn't watch this far into the video will have a completely different view on Shad then. And it doesn't justify lying to their audience over and over about the stories they talk about. Hopefully seeing how these people misrepresent these stories and why helps you spot them more easily and engage with the media and these social movements more honestly. The type of fiction we create changes how we interact with certain values, but so does how we critique and discuss it, how we remember these stories. And these people are trying to control the latter by simplifying, obfuscating, and sometimes lying. A story is not good or bad because of the values it promotes, but by the quality of its writing and how it communicates those ideas, how it... Okay, so I think I'm going to leave this here because basically what he just said, I completely agree with. I'm going to rewind it back. A story is not good or bad because of the values it promotes, but by the quality of its writing and how it communicates those ideas, how it impacts people. And that's fundamentally why these people are poor critics. Uh, okay, so I disagree with that final bit, but yeah, I think I agree with his definition there generally and i am going to leave it here i'm not going to watch the last half hour of the video because i don't think he's going to say anything that i feel i'll need to respond to i think that he has been very very unfair to the majority of people that he has listed i think that he has absolutely cherry-picked uh, their material i think that in particular because i of course know my own videos better than i know any of one else is on that list i think that it is incredibly unfair to put me on the same list um, even if, even if we just say, like, if I agree with him completely that everyone on that list, all of the woke bros, his criticisms, criticisms of them are completely valid. I have absolutely no idea why he put me on the same list. And if he had watched my videos, then he would know that. And you might be like, oh, well, come on. Your, um, videos on Rings of Power is, like you said, 13 hours and 50 minutes long or whatever it is. You can't expect him to watch all of that. That's, that's like a day. And sure, like, I wouldn't expect that of most people. Um, the people that I do expect that of, though, are people like Hello Future Me, who are going to make a four hour video, 90 to 100 minutes of which uh, appears to be dedicated to discussing how various YouTube channels, including mine, um, are primarily concerned with political messaging rather than with the quality of storytelling. Um, I've been pretty explicit in my videos that my myself and him are on the same page in that regard. I, I don't give a shit if something is quote unquote problematic. I don't care if it's um if, if it's deemed to be if, if a film is deemed to be horrifically racist, if it's a really good film, it is still a really good film, even though it might be bad for society. That would be my standard. I think that is a very easy standard to maintain. And I think that any discussion of politics, um, it all it does is it muddies the waters and it distracts from the actual um the actual question that I am most concerned with, which is is this good and why? And if it's bad, why is it bad? And as soon as you start bringing in, well, it has this political messaging that I agree with and this that I don't, then you're just bringing your own biases into it. And I think as, as best as you can, when you're, particularly when you're talking about plot and character, you need to be aware of your own biases and you need to leave them out of the discussion. So yeah, I do think absolutely that Hello Future Me, broadly speaking, has been as dishonest as the people he claims are being dishonest. I think he's been very uncharitable. And I think that this is exemplified by the fact that he has put me on a list of people that he thinks to be political activists without caring to check if I am. But yeah, um, I'll trim this together and I'll probably stick it up on the second channel. So thank you guys for watching and uh, I hope you have enjoyed. Um, yeah, see you, see you in the next stream or in the next video.